Today, I wanna to talk about how to use AI coding tools the right way. AI coding assistants like Cursor and Claude Code have become a big part of my workflow building machine learning systems at Amazon, and they've made a huge improvement to my productivity. But AI coding tools aren't always beneficial. It's really common to use them incorrectly and end up with both a frustrating development experience and bad code. Whether you're a seasoned developer looking to improve your productivity or just a vibe coder who wants to be more confident with what you're writing, this video is for you. Let's get started. When I was researching this video, I came across this amazing guide that covers everything you need to know on this topic. I'm using that as a framework for the video, but check it out for more details. The link will be in the description. Okay, so the most important step actually starts before you even start coding, the planning stage. One of the key things that will improve your experience working with AI coding agents is to have a context file in place from the beginning. This will store information about your project's structure, standards, and preferences. We can call this file agents.md, which is basically a readme for the agent. Create this file at the project root and add things like essential commands, tech stack, style guidelines, architecture, and common gotchas. This file is static over time unless you make changes. Another thing you can do is use at mentions to pull in real-time context like at docs to reference your project documentation, at git to understand what you changed recently, or at codebase to understand the full project context. Once you have this global context, you need to align with the agent on a plan. Tell the assistant to outline steps, risks, and quick tests before writing code so you can review and adjust the approach. Tell the agent explicitly that you want it to get your approval before writing any code. Using ask mode can be really helpful at this stage. At this phase, you'll want to be using a higher capability model or extended reasoning mode so it can read, synthesize, and propose a plan before coding. You can even ask the LLM to present several different approaches with pros and cons so you can choose the best option. It can be tempting to outsource all of the planning to the model, but it can be good practice to draft the solution yourself first, then use assistance to refine it. This can help get better final results and also helps prevent your brain from turning into mashed potatoes. So it's one thing to know how to use the tools, but is that enough to get a job in AI? Probably not. Right now, there's a lot of opportunity in AI building agentic systems. Coding assistants help with syntax, but building production-ready products requires knowing things like orchestration, multi-agent workflows, and guardrails. If you want to go deep into that, there's a program on agentic AI by Interview Kickstart that covers this hands-on. It takes about 14 weeks to finish, and you complete two guided live projects, so you build something tangible for your portfolio in the end. I'll leave a link to that below. There's no coupon code. The best deal you can get is just by signing up for the free webinar in the link. You can ask your questions questions and see if it's a good fit for you. I had a good experience as a technical mentor for IK, so it's definitely worth your time to check out if you're interested in AI engineering. Okay, so back to using these tools. You might think that the agent can only work with written instructions, but actually there's a ton you can do with images as well. Most of the coding agents can accept an image of a UI or system design diagram as a starting point. This can be great for getting a prototype up really quickly. I've even used AI design tools to come up with the app design I'm after, then uploaded those images to Cursor to have it implemented. If you're not super confident in your design skills, doing something as simple as asking the agent to make the design better or more beautiful can work surprisingly well. So once you have your context, design, and potentially a prototype, it's time to actually start coding. The main piece of advice I have is to keep things as linear and simple for the LLM as you possibly can. Write straightforward code with clear function names and avoid inheritance and clever hacks. Simple code works better with assistance. You may be successful being even more granular and telling the agent a function signature to specify the inputs and outputs you want. You can also highlight key details using keywords like important, never, always, in prompts to steer the model away from common mistakes. Strangely, this is still the most effective approach. For larger tasks, it can work best to use established libraries that were in the model's training data. If you're using libraries that are newer or outside of the model's training knowledge, you can feed the model recent examples and documentation to teach it how the library works. I find that it's very helpful to use a new context every time you switch tasks. For example, during long session, Claude's context window can fill with irrelevant conversation, file contents, and commands. This can reduce performance and sometimes distract Claude. You can use the clear command frequently between tasks to reset the context window. It can also be helpful to use something called compaction to summarize your current progress when you start a new context. You can say something like, write down everything we've done so far to progress.md. Ensure to note the end goal, the approach we're taking, the steps we've done so far, and the current failure we're working on. Relatedly, make sure you're using checkpoints and can revert to known good states before you start a big refactor or risky change. This can be as simple as just committing often to Git, or for super sketchy things, you can check out a new branch first. Another useful tip is to pick the right model and reasoning level for the job. For routine edits, you can use just like a fast model. While you may want a different model for long contexts or vision problems, 
Similarly, sometimes you might not need extended reasoning, but for complex debugging, architecture work, or kind of ambiguous specs, you can pick a reasoning model so that the assistant budgets more reasoning tokens. While coding, make sure that you're adding sufficient logs. This is really helpful for debugging when something doesn't work as expected. You can have logs set to debug mode only and then include instructions in your context files to always consult the logs if the agent runs into issues. This has seriously saved me so much time. You can even go so far as to set up tools to allow the agent to make changes, run tests, see what fails, and try again on their own. Or one step further is to spawn sub-agents to verify details or investigate specific questions. This can help preserve context availability without much downside in terms of lost efficiency. While you can use the agent to write tests, Ultimately, it's your job as the developer to ensure the code works as expected. This means understanding the tests the agent has written and checking them for validity and coverage. One option that works well with agents is using a test-driven development approach. Earlier, I mentioned providing the entire function signature. TDD is like that, except in this case, you first ask the agent to write tests based on your expected input and output pairs before writing the actual functions. It's important to be explicit about the fact that you're doing test-driven development so that it avoids creating mock implementations in the tests. Then tell the agent to run the tests and confirm they fail, because of course the code hasn't actually been written yet. And then finally ask the agent to write code that passes the tests, instructing it not to modify the tests. At this point, you're ready to review the code. As a first pass, have the assistant perform a code review of its own work before human review to surface issues and improvements. It can also be helpful to have another agent review the code, potentially using a more expensive model. But don't skip on actually reviewing the code line by line yourself. It is so common for AI-generated code to be inefficient or even incorrect. Always review every file that was altered since assistants have a tendency to make sweeping changes. So that about wraps up our list. But one final word of advice. As cool as these tools are, they're just tools. Use them well, but keep your own brain sharp. I think that the people who will be successful in the future are those who are awesome at using the AI coding tools, but also strong in other areas of system design, communication, and business intuition. Just don't let ChatGPT give you donkey brains. If your goal is to land a job at a top tech company, I'll leave a link in the description to a guide from Interview Kickstart on interview prep skills. Also, if you want some ideas for cool projects you can build with these tools, check out my video on projects that get you hired up next. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.